nothing impossible for God. There's absolutely nothing. Whatever that you may be facing, whatever our community's facing, whatever your life's facing, whatever your marriage is facing, whatever your kids are facing, whatever we're facing in our community, whatever we're facing in our country, if you believe, God says there's nothing impossible for His people that believe. Would you believe that story? Would you step out on the Would you let Jesus restore you? Would He say that to Him this morning with a heart of thankfulness? Sing it again, Bobby.
Oh God, are we blessed in America or what? Once a week. But listen, no guilt about you eating or anything. We're blessed, the Apostle James tells us, so that we can be a blessing to those. And I will assure you, what's given this morning, every penny of it will go to the people in Kakamega, Kenya, Africa. Just last week, you're going to see this morning as Mike begins to sing this special. I talked to Mike, Brother Mike, Thursday, I believe it was, Wednesday or Thursday. And what the money that we have sent about two weeks ago was feeding, two or three weeks ago, was helping feed 156 families. Now these families have an average of four to seven children per family. So you can up that figure, just add, that's 156 families. And what you give here is already been, we've already sowed into this once. And I can't imagine a boy or a girl or any person going to bed hungry for a week before they eat. So this morning, as my brother begins to sing, and we're going to pray before you start singing, brother. I brought this chest out. And this is your offering above your tithes today. As God leads you, you make out. If you're making my check for the Solid Rock Church, and put you can either put K-A-K-A-M-A-G-A. K-A-K-A-M-A-G-A, Kenya, Africa, or you could put Mike Joyner Ministries. And Brother Hiram Hodge is going to meet with him tomorrow and put that check in his hand. You can make it out either way or make it out from the Solid Rock Church and come and drop it in the treasure chest because I'm going to tell you, where your treasure is, there's where your heart is also. So if the Lord's leading you to give today, just give, it didn't matter. You know the, the widow, she gave two mites. Two mites she gave all she had. Doesn't mean the amount. It means the heart. So Father, bless each and every one that gives today and those, Father, that can't. We ask you to bless them with seed so that they can. As Mike begins to sing and watch the people. These are actually people that you're going to see on the slides this morning that are eating because you gave about three weeks ago. Go ahead, brother. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Whatever may pass and whatever 
when my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then Pray that 
during the loss of our Aunt Tommy, and uh, which is now with the Lord Jesus Christ at 102 years old. Thank you for the kind thoughts, the words, the cards, the food, and all of you that served and prepared food and fed our families uh, yesterday and our out-of-town families. It was wonderful. It was a great celebration, and it was just like Aunt Tommy would have loved when she sung that song to me and Bonnie over and over again. I'm just a moving, moving on on the good old gospel way. Just moving, I keep a moving on. Heavens, don't remember the rest of the song. But you know what? She'd always end the song. She did. That was her favorite song. One of her top three favorite. I just keep a moving, moving on. And she kept singing that until she got down to where she could not sing anymore for about the last, what, two or three weeks? Yeah, well, only about a week ago, I guess. Yeah, about a week ago. And, and just prior to that, I had her sing that song again. And every time Aunt Tommy, I mean, I mean, this amazing woman of God, never heard her gripe or complain about nothing. She was always thankful in everything. And when she'd end that song, she'd always say, Woo! Praise the Lord! Yeah, Amen! Amen. <laughs> you got anything you want to say, sweetheart? No, I just thank you. And those that brought the food yesterday, it was it just touched my heart. And, and all the family, we enjoyed your company there too. and glad that you stayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. I give yourself a hand. Yeah, wipe it off because of us. Amen. How many of you ever come to the end of yourself? And by talking about in here, have you ever come to the end of yourself and all that you found was just more of yourself? When you come to the end of yourself, it's the greatest thing to be, or the greatest place to be, and find out the awesomeness of the abundance of God's grace, of what you could not do for yourself, that Jesus Christ has already done for you and will give you right there, if you can answer this one question. And this is the question of the hour this morning. Jesus said, do you love me? He's not asking anything else of you. But this one question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? You know, the name of the sermon this morning, and welcome all you that are watching. And, and uh, I also got a call this morning from Dr. Bardia, Naomi. Uh, he and his wife, lovely wife and children, were members here at Solid Rock until they had to move on off to Florence, Alabama. But he called, he's watching this morning. Good morning to you and all of your family there. Uh, Brother Bardia, God bless you. and. And uh, also, good morning, all of you that are watching by Facebook. But this morning, if I were to entitle this sermon, the Lord led me to, 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 to speak this to my heart and to give to you this morning, chosen, messed up, but restored. Can you say that with me? I'm chosen, I've messed up, but I'm restored. I don't think you believe it this morning. Let's say it one more time. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. But I've messed, messed up. But He restored me. He restored me. See, how many of you here today are listening by live stream know that Jesus absolutely chose you. He saved you. He gave you His Spirit. But along the way, you messed up. I have never messed up. Or I have never met anybody, including myself, 
that didn't mess up somewhere along the way, or maybe messed up really bad, or maybe messed up several times on their way and on their walk with God. Some that mess up, however, and unfortunately, if they keep messing up, they fall back into their old life that they once lived. Because there's one thing that they could not find. And that was a place of repentance. So that God could remind them that they were chosen. He chose them. And He's very able to keep you and I when we're chosen by Him and we responded to the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and we're saved, but we messed up. And when we find a place of repentance from our heart and can answer that question, yes, Lord, I love you, but that love seems weak to yours. And there's where grace comes in of the abundant supply of grace and will restore you right where you are. You know, i got good news for you if you've messed up and you're listening this morning and, and you're out of the will of God, but you were chosen and you've messed up and you went back into the world. God is able to keep you and restore you if you love Him no matter how bad that you have messed up. Can somebody say amen if you believe that? Now I'm not preaching a message this morning that it's alright to sin. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But I'm, I'm preaching a message this morning of just how much that Jesus loves you. But do you love Him? You see, God is able to keep you. And Jude 1.24, listen to this Word of God. Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and bring you with great joy into His glorious presence without a single fault. Now that's the grace of God. When you seem to not measure up, Jesus' grace always measures up. When you can't seem to live it, God will live it for you if you only love Him. And Jesus said, if you love Me, you'll keep My commands. Do you love Him this morning? And listen to this. God is able to keep you if He chose you. In Philippians 1 and 6, and I'm certain that God who begun the good work in you will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. He's able. He's able. He's able. That's what grace is all about. It's not about your works trying to be chosen and saved, but it's about God's grace, His unmerited, unearned favor. It's about His abiding presence on your life and in your life for you to have the power of God in dwelling in you to be all, to do all, and to live all, and to live a life victorious in and for and by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what grace is all about. He's able. You see, the Bible speaks of several people with a troubling past that was actually chosen by God. And they were believer followers of God Almighty Himself. But they messed up, and some of them messed up quite often and really bad. But they were still God's people. And again, I'm not condoning sin. Because if you love Jesus, you won't want to sin. And if you do sin, it'll break your heart. And you'll weep bitterly. You won't just think, well, I got away with it and God didn't see it. No. If you just keep getting away and, and keep thinking, well, I'm glad I just didn't get that I, I didn't get caught, then I'd make your call in an election sure if you're really truly saved by the power of God. Because those that are born of the Spirit of God, we don't, we can't stand sin. We hate it. Because see, it opens the door to the enemy to make you feel guilt and shame and regret and condemnation. But God's grace is still there. If you've been chosen, can somebody give Jesus a high five and a great amen this morning? You 
You see, there were many in the Scriptures that messed up. They were chosen, but they loved the Lord. And they found a place of repentance. And they were totally restored even greater uh, than a greater place than they ever were before, before they messed up. You see, God is able and loves to restore the broken, including times when you and I mess up. There's where 1 John 1 and 9 comes in that He is faithful and just to forgive us if we sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's grace that just keeps on giving. It just keeps on giving. There's an abundant supply of this grace. You see, among those in the Bible, and I'll just mention a few here that messed up, and some of them messed up really bad, was the Apostle Paul, King David, Moses, Adam, Eve. You remember those folk? You remember reading about them in the Bible? Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Lot, Job, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Reuben, Aaron, Miriam, and Elijah, just a mention. Just a few. Just a few. However, they were restored. But today, I want to focus on one individual this morning. I don't know. Let me just, I'm going to turn this off and get that other microphone. Okay. Because it's. Yeah, we're going to play back. Is that okay? Yeah. Hello? Hello. Hello. I haven't preached with a handheld in a long time. So it's about time. Amen. Now get this. I want to I want to talk though to you. How many know about the Apostle Peter? He is just super apostle. Amen. The Apostle Peter. Okay? The Apostle Peter. Number one, he was a fisherman and he partnered with James and John. They owned their a small fishing business. And get this, Peter was actually married and he helped take care of his mom in law. Mother-in-law, mother-in-law. Some of you young people never heard that song. Have you? I'm not going to sing the rest of that, but some of you, I'm dated, yes. I'm proving how old I am. But he loved his mother-in-law. And he took care of his mother-in-law. Peter was considered a simple and an uneducated, unlearned man by the religious folks of his day. He had no formal training. He had never went to the ramp school of ministry. He had never went uh, to Rama. He was actually rejected from wanting to go to rabbinical school. If you read the history of the Apostle Peter, he just he was from the wrong side of the tracks, and he wasn't acceptable, just like a lot of us. Jesus came when Simon was called. Jesus came and changed his name to Petros. Can you say that with me? Petros. Petros. Which is Peter. Which means rock. Peter became one of the foundations of the Jesus movement. Called the way which is known now as Christianity. Images of Jesus Christ. Peter was part of Jesus' inner circle with James and John. I mean, these dudes were it. I mean, I want you to, I want you to vision that these were the inner circle. That everywhere Jesus went, yes, the twelve went, but these three guys were the inner circle. That Jesus would pick them out and say, you go right on up here with me. Even to the Mount of Transfiguration. He was the first, Peter was the first to identify Jesus as the Messiah. Peter was robust. He was brash. He was impulsive. And he was headstrong and often found his foot in his mouth. But he was chosen. However, he was chosen by the Lord. Peter saw all the signs, all the miracles, all the wonders as he walked with Jesus. He was there when Jesus turned the water into wine. He saw Jesus cast out unclean spirits and demons. 
He saw Jesus heal his mother-in-law and, and heal a person of a fever and heal lepers. Peter was there when Jesus raised the widow's son from the dead, still the swords of the sea, rebuked waters and winds and waves, and raised Lazarus from the dead. Peter was there. He was there. Peter was there when Jesus healed the woman with the issue of blood. And he raised Jack Harris' daughter from the dead. He was there when Jesus opened the blind eyes of Bartimaeus. Peter was there when Jesus fed the 12 to 15,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Peter was there and got his basket full. He was there when Jesus came to the man that was laying at the pool for 38 years and he heard and saw when Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. Peter was there and saw that miracle. However, Peter was chosen just like you. If you've been born and saved of the Spirit of God, he was chosen just like you and I. But he often spoke without thinking and stuck his big old foot in his mouth and he missed it a lot. He made mistakes. He struggled with fear, doubt. He, 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 he struggled in having respect of persons. Oh, Pastor, please don't tell me that about Peter. Listen, I've studied the book. It's in there. He had respect of persons. He struggled with law and grace. And he also struggled with his identity. Just like a lot of you. He declared his loyalty to Jesus many times, even after the Lord told him that he would deny him not just once, but three times. Three times. Not just once. Peter walked, but get this. He was chosen. Peter walked on the water. He was a born leader. He was chosen, but he messed up. And sometimes often and sometimes really bad. But he was chosen. And truly from his heart, he didn't want to mess up. There's a key. Can somebody say, listen, he's giving you a key. Amen. Peter didn't want to mess up. You know why? The reason Peter didn't want to mess up, and he often wept bitterly. Bitterly. And he was crushed when he messed up. And the reason was, he loved the Lord. The night before Jesus' betrayal, as Jesus was sitting with the twelve, He was observing the Passover we call the Lord's Supper. Jesus tells His disciples, and we'll take up there right now, in Matthew 26, 31. Jesus said this, All of you, all twelve of you, will desert Me. For the Scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But all I have been, I, but after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Now these are instructions from the Lord to all twelve. I want you to keep that in mind. Peter declared, even if everyone else, I mean, he stood up, and it's like I don't care about these other dudes sitting here. They just ain't like like me. They're not as spiritual as I am. They're not as bold as I am. I, I, I tell you the truth, Peter said. I tell you, even though everybody deserts you, Lord, I will never desert you. And then Jesus looked at Peter and He said this, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny Me three times, even that you even know Me. How many times are we in situations that we deny Jesus and even knowing Him and we're ashamed of where we're at and the devil has put shame on you and I of where we got off to when we got away from the love of our life. But God has got a way of restoring your mess up if you still love Him and you're chosen. 
No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. How many of you have ever thought that in your life? There's no way. I mean, when I got saved, it was like the greatest, most awesome thing that ever happened to my life. But then years later, 18 years later, I walked away. Lived the most darkest life that you could imagine. But you know what? He never left me. I couldn't deny Him even though I did. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but I couldn't deny that the Holy Spirit had just kept talking to me and saying, Son, please! Please don't go there! He never, the Holy Spirit never told me how bad I was. He never told me, you sinner! He never tried to beat me up and tell me that I'm going to die and go to hell. No, He kept telling me, Son, I chose you. You're breaking my heart because it's killing me to see you hurt yourself like you're hurting yourself with drugs and alcohol and women and perversion and all these kind of things that you were trying to put into your heart to fill up that emptiness in you because of the spirit of rejection. But you know what? I couldn't deny it because I was chosen just like most of you today and most of you that are watching today. The question of the hour is this. Do you still love Him? Do you love Jesus? That's what He wants to know today. Do you still love Him? And see, just like me, you can find that day if you can still repent, God's ready to restore, restore you. And restore you to a place like you have never seen. Can somebody say amen? amen. And I want to take you to another Scripture in Luke 22 and 32 to, to, to let you see the seriousness of this. Luke put it this way in Luke 22 32 when he was speaking to Peter. Jesus was speaking to Peter. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So, And see, Jesus knew that he was going to mess up and mess up bad. But he wanted to let Peter know, I am praying for you. And I will always pray for you. And Jesus, you know what He's doing in heaven? He's not just sitting there patting His foot. He is interceding and praying for each and every one of you. And for your families and for everybody today that does not know Him as Lord and Savior. So when you have repented, there's a key. He said, Peter, I know you're going to mess up. And when you have repented and turned to me again, this is what I want you to do. I want you to strengthen your brothers. In other words, when you come back to the Lord, God is bringing you to a different level in your walk with God because what the devil meant for harm or your flesh did and the devil was all over it. God is wanting you now on that platform that He's placed you to minister the love of God to somebody else and say, listen, I've been there. I've done that. And there's a better life for you. Jesus still loves you no matter how far that you've gone. You believe that? Say amen this morning. Jesus, after this, He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He takes Peter and the other disciples with Him. They couldn't even pray with Jesus one hour. But they were chosen. They, they couldn't carry one hour with the Master, but they were chosen. They were chosen. Do you get that? They were chosen. And now Judas comes with a kiss of betrayal. The Roman soldiers and the temple guards came to arrest and take Jesus away. And Peter, I want you to catch this. Punch somebody and say, catch this. Catch it. They come to take Jesus. And nobody else does this. But Peter pulls out his sword and he cuts off the high priest's servant ear. Whee! Even though he, he messes up. Why did he do that? Because he loved 
the Lord Jesus. Jesus touches the man's ear right in front of Peter and the rest of them. And he and the man's ear completely. The Bible doesn't say that he picked up his ear and put it back on. The Bible says he touched his ear and it was made whole. I believe right before their eyes, the Lord Jesus just reached out, touched the ear, and all of a sudden, <laughs> there's another ear. It's just like God. And he probably heard a whole lot better out of that ear. It was his right ear. He, and I'm going to tell you, that man, I guarantee you, his name was Malchus, I guarantee you he could hear the Spirit of God from that day forward. I mean, how many of you, when God touches you, you're going to hear from the Spirit. Amen? And, and Malchus, he wasn't even a believer. I guarantee you that day he was a believer. He was a believer. But Peter, he followed Jesus from a distance. You know, a lot of times when we flirt with the world and love things of the world and we just want to prolong the process and we want to see how far that we can get away from God but still make it into heaven. Oh, God help us. And the question is, do you still love me? We, we, we want to see that. We, 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 we get distance from God. And we think that, well, I'm all right. You know, I'm all right. Well, you might be all right because you was chosen. But you're going to suffer some things because Jesus even told Peter that Satan, boy, is going to sift you. He's going to sift you. The sifting of Satan is only allowed by the Lord to wake you up and bring you to the place of repentance so that you can be returned to your first love. Is anybody listening this morning? So Peter, he was willing to cut off the high priest Malcolm's ear. And he saw a miracle, but then he followed Jesus at a distance. Why? Because he wanted to see how's all this going to turn out. A lot of you want to see how all this is going to turn out. I'll follow the Lord if I can just see how I'm going to get my miracle tomorrow, next week, or, 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 or she'll come back to me, or, or, or God, if you'll pay off this, or God, if you'll give me that, I'll, 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 I'll do it, I'll come back. That's not faith. Faith calls for things that are not as though that they are. And faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not yet seen. And see, a lot of times when we don't live by faith, we are actually sure we don't love the Lord. So we distance ourselves. And we wonder what in the world is wrong. I thought you loved me, God. He does. Peter heard all the false witnesses there. There he's at a distance. And, 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 and they're, they're accusing Jesus. Uh, they're getting false witnesses and people to testify against Him. And there Peter heard all the false witnesses. They're testifying their lies about His Lord. And Peter heard the verdict when they said, Crucify Him! He saw them spit in Jesus' face, pull out His hair and His beard, and heard, he heard the beating. He saw the beating firsthand. And Peter sat there like a lot of us and did nothing. But he was chosen and Jesus still loved him. Even though he messed up. And did nothing. Now Luke 22 and 54. So they arrested him, Jesus, and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. Then the guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter actually come in with the enemy and warmed himself by the enemy's fire. It's not funny. But how many times... Do we follow Jesus at a distance? And we'll warm ourselves at the enemy's camp. Could be another person of the opposite sex. It could be some friends that you don't need to be hanging out with and doing those things with, but you need to be witnessing to those people and loving them the way that you're loved by God. 
So Peter is at a distance. He joins and warms himself at their fire. The serpent girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Has anybody ever stared at you because of your image of Jesus? Do they see Jesus in you? They just stare and also accuse you. This servant girl said, This man right here, Peter, that's him. I know him. He's one of them followers of the way of Jesus. But Peter denied it and denied it. He said, Woman, I don't even know him. Not only did he mess up, he also is a liar. Oh, Pastor, would you please? I'm not here to bash Peter. I'm here to show you the abundant grace of God today on how much He loves you. When you get a picture of that in your heart of how much God loves you, you won't want to follow the world. You won't want to follow anybody but Jesus Christ and you will see a new revelation of God like you've never seen before of how much much mercy, how much grace, how much forgiveness and the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that Jesus Christ has given us all. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. No, man, I'm not. Peter even cursed. Now we got a liar and we got somebody cursing. Because it says he, he retorted. You look the word up. He cursed. I don't know what he said, but he cursed. I didn't say it was okay. And God's Word didn't say it was okay. Amen. See, this is not a ticket to sin. But this is life. This is life of the growth and the process that we all go through being formed into the image of God. And about an hour later, verse 59, uh, someone else uh, insisted, this must be one of them because he is even a Galilean too. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. In other words, do you go to church down there with that crazy pastor and them spirit-filled, tongue-talking, prophetic people at Solid Rock? And you like... It scares you to death. And you say, boy, I wish they didn't ask me that. You know, I like going down there, but I don't want anybody to know that I go there. (laughs) And immediately while Peter was still talking, this is what he heard. (laughs) The third time. Some of you chicken lovers like that. I got I'm married to one. I want you to catch this. When that rooster crowed, Jesus was being escorted away, bleeding, his hair pulled out, and his beard jerked out and bleeding. At that moment, the Lord turned and He looked at Peter. Can you imagine love looking at you straight in your eyes with love and kindness and sinless and accepting even though you've messed up? You see, the eyes are the gateway to a person's soul. And, and Peter saw that look. It wasn't like one of them bad looks that you give somebody. It was a look of love and compassion and restoration. And Peter saw those eyes looking at him on the way out. And Peter left the courtyard and it just killed him on the inside. And he began to weep bitterly. What in the world have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Because see, he loved Jesus. And he was chosen just like you. But he messed up. And even after Jesus' resurrection from the dead, Peter still didn't believe it. Are you kidding me, Pastor? The women went to Jesus' tomb and found the stone rolled away and two angels told the women He's risen. Go and tell Peter and the others. 
Luke 29 and verse 9, so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was, now listen, here's the women, men. Have you known that men are supposed to lead? It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense. Even though Jesus was telling Peter and the others, this is what's going to happen. But it sounded like nonsense to them. But they were chosen. Just like you and I. But they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb. And he, he stopped and looked and he peered in and he saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again and he was still wondering. I just wondered what happened. Still didn't believe. He didn't even believe in the resurrection even after Jesus' resurrection that Sunday evening as the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, suddenly Jesus was standing among them, resurrected from the dead. And Jesus showed them the wounds in His hands and the wounds in His side. And He tells them, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And He breathes on them and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus appeared to them again at 11 because doubting Thomas wasn't at that meeting. And, and He says to Thomas in front of everyone there, including Peter, put your finger in my side and my hands and put your hand to the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Believe. And Thomas said, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen Me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And that's you and I. And after all the proof of Jesus, all the proof of the resurrection of Jesus as the Messiah, all the miracles performed that Peter saw, His crucifixion and His miraculous resurrection, Simon Peter says this, after everything that I've told you from the Word of God today, and Peter says this in John 21, 3, I... I'm going fishing. In other words, I've had enough. I'm just going back to fishing. And the other disciples said, well, we'll come to You be careful. There's people watching your life. And when you quit on God, there's a lot of people that have quit too. Oh yeah, don't tell me. You, you, you don't believe that. It's true. There's other people watching your life. Do you still love Him? You can be restored to because you're chosen. And see, because Peter said, I'm going fishing. The other disciples said, we'll come too. They all said it. They all went out to the boat and they caught nothing at all that night. You see, they, like a lot of us, go back to a dead, unprosperous life that Jesus has already saved us from. There's nothing back in your old life. Even though the devil would tell you, yeah, you ain't no good. You messed up real bad now. God don't love you no more. You messed up. You messed up. You messed up. Let me remind you of something. Jesus, when He was crucified, He nailed the law of sin and death to His cross. And He nailed sin to the cross. How could you not love a Savior that would pay for all of that for just you believing and loving Him? John 21, 4. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach. This is after the resurrection. And they were out in that boat. But the disciples couldn't see who He was. He called out, Hey, fellas! <laughs> this is so humorous, but so good. So humorous, but so good. How many believe God's got a sense of humor? If you don't believe it, look up here at me. He said, Hey, boys! Have y'all caught any fish? He already knew they didn't catch even a minute. No! They didn't know it was Jesus. They couldn't even recognize the Lord. Then He said, well, I want you to throw out your net on the right side of the boat and you'll get some. How many times has God told you something and you didn't obey what He said? And I'm going to tell you, you ain't going to get nothing. All He said, just throw it out. 
You didn't notice that? What? You see, you and I will just try to reason things away. We'll say, I, that just must be I, me thinking that. You know, it just seems like crazy. No, it's of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking to you to do something that you don't obey the Lord. You ain't going to get nothing. That's still His love pursuing you. And even in your mess up times, God is still speaking to you. You know why? Because you've been chosen. Amen. Thank you for Jesus choosing us. And then, so they did. They finally threw in the net. And they couldn't haul in the net because there was so many fish in the net. They couldn't. It's the biggest catch that Peter ever witnessed. And the disciple that loved Jesus, I love this part. Look, don't lose, don't lose right now. Don't lose me right now. I want you to listen. The disciple that loved Jesus, that was John, he said to Peter, Hey, it's the Lord. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. And this is the part that I love. And this shows that Peter still had a love for Jesus. Nobody else did this. Only Peter, the mess up. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic. Because he is fishing in his underwear. He would never show up in front of the Lord like that. Because of the respect and honor and his love for the Lord. So he, 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 he put on his breeches and everything he had. He, he hurried and he put everything, his clothes back on. And he jumps in the water. He's the only one. He jumps in the water and he swims. Some of the scholars says it somewhere around 100 to 200 yards, he swims to the shore because he ain't going to wait on the rest of them. He wants to get to the love of his life the first one. Even though he was a mess up, he knew if I could just get to him, everything's going to be alright. So he swims. He swims and heads to the shore. Did you ever wonder why Peter couldn't wait? And he swam to the shore. It was Jesus' pursuit of him. It was Jesus' presence. It was Jesus' relationship. It was Jesus' love and acceptance of Peter. He always felt from the Lord when he was close to the Lord. He felt the love and acceptance. He needed to be in that relationship. It was the abundance of God's grace that he felt. It was the presence of Jesus. It wasn't Peter's. It wasn't Peter's pursuit of Jesus. It was Jesus' pursuit of Him. At that moment, when he stepped up on that shore, soaking wet and dripping, he was overtaken by God's love and God's grace. And Peter remembered these words from Luke 22.32. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon Peter, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. While the others come on shore, they found breakfast. Yeah, the Lord liked to eat fish. He baked some bread. I don't know if he had some of Bonnie's eggs there or not. But they had a good breakfast that morning. They might have had some of Aunt Tommy's blackberry jelly and put the equal on top of it. I don't think they had that at that time, but I thought it would be a good time to throw that in. All they knew is it was the Lord. This was the third time that Jesus had appeared to these eleven. And please note here, even in their unbelief, don't ever let the devil make you feel condemned and live in guilt and condemnation and feel rejected. When you go through a season of unbelief, just remember you're chosen. And Jesus is asking you this morning, do you still love me? They belong to Jesus. He pursued them. And just like Jesus is right now pursuing you. In John 21 and 15, this is where I want to close this morning. It's not time to get ready to go. It's time to receive. 
after breakfast, Jesus asked Peter. Of all people, He asked Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? <clears throat> that love word there is the word of God kind of love. It's called agape or agapo. Love. And then he asked this question. He said, uh, do you love me more than these? His brothers? The other apostles? It's because, see, Jesus knows we cannot love like God loves until we love like God loves. That is the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not just to speak in tongues. It's not just about the nine gifts of the Spirit. It is about loving other people that you as a believer, follower of Jesus, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you need to have the love of God. That's the purpose for you to love people so that you can be a witness for Jesus and love people. So he knew that Peter could not love them like he loved them. But he said, to Peter, do you agape me more than these? And see, Peter knew what that word meant. But he said, yes, Lord. You know I... See, he wasn't lying. But he says a lesser kind of love. He said, you know I love you. He said the Greek word phileo or filio. You know, Lord, I feel filio you. And then he said, well... Then feed my lambs. And then in verse 16, Jesus repeated the question the second time, Simon, son of John, do you agape me? Do you love me the way that I love? And Peter said, you know, Lord, you know, Lord, I believe you, I believe you. And then see, Peter, don't rebuke him. He said, then take care of my sheep. Then the third time, Jesus asked Peter, Simon, son of John, do you filio me? He doesn't use the word agape. He said, do you filio me? Peter was hurt. He was broken and he was hurt. Then Jesus asked him the question three times. And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I filio you. Jesus said, then I want you to feed my sheep. In other words, I want you to love them with a the God kind of love. You see, Jesus asked Peter twice, do you agape me? You see, agape love is the most powerful love in all. It's sacrificial love. It's more than a feeling. It's an act of your will. This is the love that God has for you and I. He demonstrated it when He gave Jesus His only begotten Son so that you and I could become chosen sons and daughters of God. Amen. Filial love here refers to a close friendship like a best friend, a generous and affectionate love. Filial love involves feelings of warmth and affection toward another person. However, God commands us to have agape love toward other people. So do you see how important that God's abundant grace is and accepting His love is for each and every one of us and why each and every born again called God-fearing person needs to be baptized in the Holy Spirit I want you to notice here in closing that even in all of Peter's mess-ups, he found the abundance of God's grace that was always there for him. When he repented and came back to Jesus, his first love, I want you to pay special attention in closing today to Jesus. Jesus, when Peter came back and was restored, he repented because he loved the Lord. And Jesus restored him. But paid a lot of attention here. When Peter came back, Jesus never asked Peter, why did you deny me three times when I needed you? 
He never condemned Peter. He never asked Peter, where were you when I needed you the most? He never said to Peter, I'm going to step you down for a while. You mess up. He never told Peter that he was a loud mouth and you stick your mouth, your, your foot in your mouth all the time. He never one time condemned Peter. He never told Peter he was a loud mouth and your mouth has got you in trouble. Jesus didn't remind Peter that he had to rebuke him and say, get me behind. You know, in other words, Jesus didn't look at him and say, well, I told you so. Don't you remember that time I had to rebuke you and tell you, get thee behind, behind me, Satan? He never brought up his past. Just like, if you don't get anything else out of this today, I want you to know this. God will never bring up your past. The devil will and you will. But He bought you with His precious blood. Your past is no more. Jesus only asked Peter one thing. And that's why He's asking you this morning. Do you love Me? Then the third time, listen to Me. Jesus came and got down on Peter's level of love just like He does every one of us. Whatever level of love that you have for the Lord, Jesus will meet you there right now. Right now and be His best friend so that He could restore Peter just like He's going to restore some of you this morning and fill you with God's kind of love, agape love, that you'll not only have for God, but you'll have for all others. Jesus is asking one thing from you today. Do you love Me? Do you love Me? Do you love Me? Three times. You may have been chosen already. You may have been saved already. But you've messed up like Peter. Jesus is waiting on your answer right now. Is it a yes? You may be chosen, but you have messed up. If that is you, then it's time to repent and let Jesus restore you. And see, after Pentecost, Peter was with the other 119 in the upper room praying and fasting and in prayer and supplication. And then on the day of Pentecost, a mighty rushing wind came in. It was like the Holy Spirit baptism. It was like a mighty rushing wind. And tongues of fire set on each of their heads and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then above all of the mess ups that wasn't messed up anymore, stood up and preached to thousands of people. Stood up tall. Stood up tall and brave with courage because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And now He not only loved God, He loved those people that were perishing. And He preached to thousands of people. Said, men and brethren, don't be surprised of what you hear today. This is what the prophet Joel has said. That in the last days that God would pour out His Spirit upon all men. This is what you are witnessing today. And then he told about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and how that they had put Jesus, all of us, and put Him on the cross. And they cried out to Peter and said, Men and brethren, what must we do then? Because they were pricked in the heart just like some of you are today. And, and Peter knew because it had happened to him. He was chosen, he was messed up, but he was restored. And this is what he said in Acts 2.38. Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved and receive the same gift because that gift is for you and your families and to all that would call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you stand to your feet today? If you're here this morning, you may have messed up, but Jesus is asking you the same question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? If you've, not, if you've never been saved, if you've never been... Jesus is always pursuing people. 
you may not have recognized it. But if you've never been saved, the Bible says, if you'll confess, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, make Jesus your Lord and Savior of your life. You believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. For with the mouth a person confesses from their heart unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. God loves you. Do you love Him? If you've never been saved, today's your day. If you've lost your way and you messed up, today is your day. Won't you come right now and receive Jesus and find repentance today? Jesus will meet you on the level that you're at right now. That is God's grace and His abundant supply of it to pull you right out of where you are. If you're right here today, would you come? as Sister Hannah begins to sing. Come to the Lord Jesus. He loves you. I just want you nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. How about you? Nothing else. Nothing else. that question today and you repent it you're restored keep following follow Jesus he's worth it he's worth it all God bless you today God bless you and your families today I release you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for you out there watching by Facebook today if you've received the Lord today and you answered that question, yes, yes to Jesus' question, would you write us? Would you send us a message? He's all that matters and nothing else will do. God bless you and your families today. You're dismissed.